It is my pleasure to be able to introduce to you His Excellency, the Governor of the Commonwealth, Charles D. Baker. When Lieutenant Governor Polito and I began this journey three years ago, we set out to create a state government that worked well for the people who needed it most and would be as creative and thrifty and hardworking as the people of Massachusetts. And while much remains to be done, with your help, we've made great progress toward these objectives. Partnerships with our colleagues in local government and the private sector have translated into billions of dollars of downtown and economic development projects, creating thousands of jobs and preserving and creating thousands of units of affordable and workforce housing. We've also built on this state's historic commitment to bipartisan commitment to veterans. We enhanced the benefit for Gold Star families, enacted the HOME Act, created a tax credit for small businesses that hire veterans, and committed the funding necessary to rebuild the Chelsea Soldiers' Home. Economically, we're hitting on all cylinders. In 2017, we had more people working than at any time in state history. Our economy has added 180,000 new jobs since we took office. And best of all, the number of people looking for work has dropped in every county over the past three years, and in most cases, by more than 35 percent. So I can stand here tonight and say without question that the state of our Commonwealth is strong. Over 20 years ago, we committed to what became a longstanding bipartisan investment in K-12 education high standards, equitable funding, and other major reforms. And it worked. To continue that momentum, we're funding K-12 education at the highest level in history, more than $4.7 billion. And tomorrow's budget submission will boost that number by another $100 million, representing an increase of nearly half a billion dollars since we took office. <laughs> Let's start with the opioid epidemic. The CARE Act will provide a framework for community-based aftercare addiction services, expand school-based education, and broaden pathways to treatment for people dealing with addiction. Now, since 2015, we've added over 1,100 treatment beds, increased state spending on addiction services by 60 percent, upgraded our prescription monitoring program, required medical, dental, nursing, social work, and pharmacy schools to teach every student about opioid therapy and pain management, increased access to Narcan, certified hundreds of sober homes, expanded school-based education and screening programs, and created new pa pathways to treatment. And over the next five years, we plan to add 500 more treatment beds and increase spending on addiction services by more than $200 million. But everyone, but everyone in this room knows we need to do more. Please move quickly to enact the CARE Act. We filed legislation in 2017 that will make it possible to build more housing. Our goal is 135,000 new units of housing by 2025, and we ask that this proposal be taken up quickly because for far too many people, housing in the Commonwealth is simply unaffordable. <laughs> Last spring, I appointed a council to address aging with a goal of making Massachusetts the most age-friendly state in the nation. The Council's been providing a platform to think beyond public programs and to draw on experience in technology, healthcare, business, and innovation. We're pleased to announce that AARP has formally designated Massachusetts as one of only two age-friendly states in the country. I don't think I'm being too simplistic when I say we are all here to help people. We may differ about how to get that done, but we all share that goal. 
We all want to create opportunities for people, to help them get a great education, to live in a great community, to get a great job, to live a long and healthy life, to believe in their own future and the future for their kids and their families. But we also want people to believe in their government. We owe every citizen our best efforts, but we owe those who have paid the ultimate price to keep us free something more. We owe them the humility to understand that what we do in this building is tied to something so much bigger than partisanship. It's our job to create the cohesion and vision by those who came before us, to move this state forward, to protect and fight for its interests and its people, and to never forget that we are the lucky ones. We, li we live in a great state filled with creative, community-minded, hard-working, and decent people. And what they want from us is opportunity, possibility, and hope. Not noise, not name-calling, and not finger-pointing. <laughs> they want progress on the things that help them help themselves. Now, we've done great work with you on many important issues, but our work has just begun. We stand ready to work with you to do so much more on housing, economic development, life sciences, education, criminal justice, community building, transportation, and addiction. But most of all, we all gather here tonight as the grateful recipients of a profound opportunity to serve the great people of this great state. Let's make the most of it. God bless this Commonwealth. God bless the United States of America.